this uh, consolidation is like a marriage arrangement. In a marriage uh, in our country, uh, I use the word husband and wife. No man, all the cultures, you are now it is applicable. The wife need to view. Doubt is spelling is correct. B A W. B A. O W. O W. Wife need to view. Doubt it to. Okay. After the giving the dowry and uh, getting that uh, wedding or marriage is done, who controls who? Husband will be automatically controlled by wife. Even to wear the slipper at your home, you need to get permission from your wife. If this is the case, and to allow your parents to visit your home also, that's a big story. I don't know what the culture in Egypt. But in Sri Lanka, India, story is where husband need to survive, need to pay money to husband for normal arranged marriage. So now when you talk about this uh, parent subsidiary arrangement, the parent is investing on subsidiary. So the parent is something like wife. Subsidiary is something like husband. Now we see another point. Husband have a bank account now. In, when he is doing business or work, he has a bank account. Wife also has a bank account, to be less sure. She has or she may not have. Now, this is the date of, I will say date of omission, not the marriage, sometime even before the conditions are coming. The date of committed, when that marriage arrangement is going to be done, a nikah or a registration or anything. So this time, the bank account of the husband, who will manage and control? Yes. Husband, husband will manage and control. But after this time, this bank account of the money should be pulled with bank account of the money. And who will have the reality card and the, uh, the checkbook and all that? Yes. Same story. That the same theory will apply to consolidation. Now we call it this date, date of acquisition. What do you call that? Date of acquisition. And this period, we call it pre acquisition period. And this period, we call it post. So, until the date of the acquisition, when at the time of acquisition, okay, the negotiation is coming for the parent to buy the subsidiary to arrive the value, how much we should pay to the subsidiary, then you should calculate not only the capital, even the profit that is being generated by the subsidiary. So, that's why if you see in this example, we have taken the total of 100 and 1200 together by the 1200 already uh, profit generated by whom? Subsidiary. Now I am going to pay some money so the subsidiary will argue and ask for money for the profit that they generated. This we call it pre-acquisition profits. So you have this area pre-acquisition profits. But post acquisition profit is a different story. Now after the marriage, every day, the, every month when he brings the salary, he cannot do anything. That the wife will control and then he or she only decides so what to do and where to go, what to do, what shopping and then how to save in plan everything. The wife will control. After the acquisition, the profits of the subsidiary owned by who? So the post acquisition profits, this will be owned by okay. So now we have taken this. Next what we need to do is second working. This is the first working, huh? This working we call it 
calculation of goodwill. That's the working number one. Working number two. Consolidated results. The return earnings of the parent and the return earnings of the subsidiary. How we manage this? So we have parent company and we have subsidiary company. As per question. Can we find out from the question? How much? Parent company, return earnings. How much? 19,400. Subsidiary company return earning. How much? 1,000. But we need to do now, we should subtract pre acquisition results. How much? At the date of acquisition, of this 1,200, how much at the date of acquisition they are having? Entire 1,200, they are having, right? So what we need to do is, we need to take, remove this out. And please note, this only I have taken here. I have took it out from there and then use it to calculate the goodwill. So, what is the answer? And how do you name this? This is known as post acquisition. Research. Suppose, for example, you have 500 here. That means the remaining uh, return ending. Who is owned, owned by who is this belong to whom? It's the parent, no? So what you need to do now, you should transfer to parent. The entire amount, whatever the amount, you will transfer. And then we get the nineteen thousand four hundred and fifty. So this is the group left after finishing this group. Now we go to balance sheet again. Now we can prepare the when we now do now we can now do the balance sheet. So any doubt in this before I go to the prepare the balance sheet? Is it only two separate? In this, in this example. But there are other steps will come when you develop the discussion. So now we prepare the consolidated statement of financial position. We have to use a question only. Okay, but now we told that yeah. at that uh, the before I mean pre pre acquisition time. Yeah. That uh, subsidiary has one thousand two hundred. Correct. In case if it is more than that, that's exactly what I told you, no? Correct. So that particular remaining amount will be a post acquisition and should be given to pay. Pay. But now we got the question. We start with assets. We will follow the same format. Huh? What is the next line item there? PPE. What I told you, we should do a line by line heading. How much here? 20. And how much here? So, it will be 20,000 plus 900. So, I have 20,000. That's the first step. Second one. Investment in silver star. Do I need to take it? That already we have kicked off. Now we come to current results. Two hundred plus four hundred. Two thousand six hundred. What is the first item? Inventory. Three thousand two hundred plus four hundred. Two thousand. Three thousand two hundred plus four hundred. So that means three thousand six hundred. Next item. Trade receiver. Two thousand five hundred. Plus 175. 175. 2,675. Correct, no? Correct. Okay. 
So that is 2635. That was? Cash. Cash. How much? 500 plus 125. 20? 5. 5. So that is 625. Anything else? This balance sheet, huh? Yeah. This is the balance sheet we are doing. Consolidated. Consolidated balance sheet. How much the total? The total would be. Uh, we know that we need to take the total of the non current assets and the current assets. So, can we take that total? This is a total asset. $27,800. Now, what is the next step there? Equity and
By reading that, you should know one thing, there is no non-controlling in this. Second thing. Third, I need to calculate the good will. So you should know the required steps. You should find out purchase consideration. In a shortcut or direct, indirect we say, investment in the subsidiary. How much investment do you have made? So that uh, question giving you? 1,300. 1,300. You take that. Then you have to make sure, compare this with the net asset of the subsidiary. When I say net asset, that is the total of the equity. And important, total of the equity at the date of acquisition. For, for example, you see, here my balance sheet date how much? When? First January 2011. Suppose if the question telling you prepare financial statement on 31st December 2011, so that is after how long the equation is? 12 months. So during this 12 months there could be some transaction now. So that can have an impact on your profits. That's when post equation profits are coming. So you have to find that term. So percentage, uh, no NCI, uh, investment, and date of acquisition, these things you have to find out. Then you calculate, you, you put down the format for goodwill. Arrive the goodwill. Goodwill here is obviously zero. Number two, you work out the consolidated reserves of return earnings. So you based on that this information, you are going to take the portion from the subsidiary to After that, we prepare the balance sheet based on the normal understanding. Is that clear? Can I move on to the next question? What's the time now? Four. We'll pray, sir, and we'll continue.